Okay, so we've been getting a lot of requests over the years about, you know, we want more information, more information, more information. And so rather than sit there and, and almost like kind of preach or give a lecture, um, I think this is a really good venue for us is to just go over raw footage and then just kind of break it down based on different um, opinions, which, you know, are given from different experiences. So in my case, you know, I do, I'm really focused on the study part of it. You know, that's, that's what I did. That's how I, you know, created the, the systems. In your case, JJ, you know, you're, you're big into the hunting part of it. So you're studying the hunting part and the strategy and setting up the land. And so your experiences are coming from a different mindset. And then of course, Chris, you know, you're new at this for the most part. It's been a number of years since you get out of the Marine Corps. And then of course you're running operations during peak season. So you're seeing it from a different perspective as well, you know? And all that information that we get is a lot of it comes from other people. And I mean, that's how I, I, I receive my information. I take in as much information as I can, whether it's looking at the deer or listening to you, your experience, and listening to you and what your thoughts and experiences are, because it doesn't matter how experienced the person is, you just bring in that information, sort it out, and then you know do what you want to do with it, and that's how you become better. You can't become better unless you're doing that. So I think this is a great venue to pick out some of these uh, clips that you got for us, JJ, and uh, let, you know let's give our thoughts on it and share it with uh, everybody that follows the Deer Society. Yeah, I mean we got terabytes and terabytes worth of footage that we never use, and it's just we call it gold. It's just sitting in our hard drive, so. We're gonna just break it down. There's so many cool experiences we can learn from and just kind of give our opinions on and then we'll just um, kind of pull them out and just kind of give more of that live open platform. And sometimes we'll bring in guests for this, but for the most part, it'll be us three and we'll just give opinions and hopefully uh, we learn stuff and, and the viewers can learn something from that too, so. Yeah, and Chris, you don't have to feel pressured, you know, ask questions or just jump in as, as we're going and, you know, we wanna hear your, your side too. So. Yeah, always just coming in as more of a learning experience for myself, but then also with the perspective of, you know, a lot of hunters out there that don't have much experience as well. So bring that perspective to the table, not just always the high end, yeah. you know, top tier hunter. Yeah. Cool. Yes, yeah, so this first clip, um, we have a little bit of background on the video clip. It, it was a no November 4th clip, um, Southern Iowa and Colton Hall is either filming or behind the bow. So we can just kind of watch it, um, a lot of cool, things happening with this deer over top of this scrape. It's a semi-horizontal scrape, you'd call it. Um, we'll just kind of break down what he does, time of the year, what that means, what he's thinking, and then um, go from there. So we'll start it off. First thing that I look at is, I always try to age deer right away. So if I were to look over and see this buck making this scrape, I would based on the Iowa factor here, they have a little bit better genetics, a little bit better nutrition. I would say three-year-old buck. There's a chance he's four, but I would say three. Pretty good mass though. So uh, it'd be interesting to get Colton's take on how old the buck really is. Using some different glands here. Um, I know the forehead gland is one he's, he's mainly rubbing on the tree, kind of giving off his scent, letting other bucks know he's in the area, kind of marking his territory. Um, interdigital glands in the feet, tarsal glands on the back of his back two legs there. He's actually peeing right now on his tarsal glands. So putting that scent down and then a couple other glands, I'll pause it right here before he walks off, wave, waves his tail and walks off. A couple other glands he was using there. Um, we'll go back, would be the orbital gland on his eyes. Nasal gland, um, salivary gland, and just there's four main glands right up by his, his head. So he's putting all that scent on that, on that rub, a semi-horizontal rub, um, kind of an interesting tree actually. And then making the scrape with a couple other glands, putting his urine down and it's pre-rut. So those are kind of the things that I picked out um, that are interesting and that would help me make a decision next on, you know, would I shoot this deer? Would I call to this deer? What, what, what action um, would happen next if I were the hunter? It's kind of it's kind of crazy because I I started absorbing it completely different than you because right away you started aging the deer and I didn't even consider aging the deer because you're thinking more of the hunter's perspective you know is this a deer I'm going to shoot 
Well, I'm looking at it differently because as soon as I look at the deer, I'm looking at it. And the first thing I did is I looked at the body of the deer to see if it's doing anything that's going to give me a hint on where the mindset is or is he doing any, anything that's communicating in any way. So that's the way I went at it right out of the gate. And, you know, you really got detailed on the glands and laying down the scent. And that's exactly what I'm picking up too, Jay. Um, this deer's laying down scent. You can see there's a, it almost looks like an old scrape there. But before I get too far into that, the first thing I picked up on was when you told me, all right, it's November, what, 7th, Fourth. the 4th? And it's in Iowa, most likely southern Iowa. So that tells me that you are probably about October end of October in Minnesota. So that's when we start getting, you know, some of the bigger bucks start to show up and start doing this kind of thing and you start seeing more of that. And so, okay, so he's doing his scrape line and his rub line and, and putting out some scrapes, like you said, making sure other deer know he's there, laying out his scent because that's how deer communicate. They can break down that scent in a way that they know exactly what deer that is. They don't go in there and say, oh, uh, there was a buck here. No, they go, oh, Bob was here, you know, and they have that pecking order and they're setting that pecking order throughout the whole season. So in my opinion, that's what he's doing right there. And also with that, then you go and the does are coming through and they're saying, oh, that, that's so-and-so and yeah, he's hot or whatever the case might be. They have to be drawn together too, you know. So that's the purpose of what he's doing. And then as far as the actual the physical part of it, I'm watching and I'm seeing this, this uh, tree that's coming down um, horizontally and it's kind of unique, you know, because you don't see a lot of that when they're hitting that that way, but it's something they really like and I've actually seen topics online where they talked about putting out rub posts in a food plot and they're doing a horizontal on there and the one guy was complaining because he, it keeps breaking and getting knocked down and everything. Well, you can see how much leverage they have. And so, yeah, that's a perfect example of that particular topic. Um, so those are some of the things that stuck out to me right away. And then when you started saying the age, and now I'm starting to look at the age, and of course, you know, I get a little more excited than you do when it comes to seeing nice deer. So I'm thinking with a Minnesota mindset that that was a four and a half year old deer, but you might be uh, more, uh, more correct on that being a three and a half, because now I'm looking at his ears, you know, where they come out, but that's for Minnesota, that would be a giant three and a half. That's why I thought it would be a four and a half, but the genetics down there, yeah. So I, th I think three and a half, four and a half is, 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 is where my mind was on it. Yeah, I'm leaning more towards three. Um, deer always look bigger when, you, when you're looking at the rack from behind. Ah, good point. So he probably looks bigger than, than he really is. Um, and then I just keep looking at the body, I just, Sometimes I, I age them a year younger than they are, but um, I'm thinking three. I don't see a big gut. He's rutted up. But yeah, if it were me and I was shooting, uh, maybe I got a mouse here I can put on there, but I'm aiming right here. It's gonna drive down, hit that backside shoulder, um, probably go top of the lungs, or top of heart, yeah. center, center lung. Yeah. Um, so if it were me, that, that's where I would aim. And you could even go back a little bit further, but those are my thoughts. Um, Chris, what do you think about this scenario? Is this you letting your arrow, letting your arrow go? Yeah, you're shooting <laughs> this buck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it all depends on the scenario of the farm, I suppose. I don't really know the structure or the class of deer they're hunting out there. That's a good point. So that, that always plays into it, too. Yeah, just interesting. I've never seen really a scrape-rub combo set up like this before, not even walking around in the woods. So is he like, he's not really like agitated though on this, is he? He's just kind of casually just leaving his scent down. Yeah, he's just starting to daylight a little bit, trying to find a hot doe, um, checking things out. This is a good, this scrape is probably a more of a community scrape on the inside of the woods. It's a really good visual. Looked like it had been hit before. There were no leaves on the ground when he started off um, and it didn't look fresh. So probably a scrape he's been to before, other bucks use. Um, just a good visual. You got that overhanging branch for kind of a licking branch, but, but more of a, a rub post than anything. So just kind of cruising around, checking things out, checking the status of the rut, see if any does are in estrus and 
Yeah, he's he, vulnerable. For yeah, sure. and from a mental perspective, think about it. I try and and you shouldn't never humanize animals, but I, you know that's that's our, our thought process and our experience. But if you're going to humanize the way this deer is feeling right now, you obviously you're going to have to simplify it because they can't, you know, think of multiple things at one time. But he's just horny. He's starting to get hot. He's starting to get horny, and he's you know like in the fall when all the girls are at the school and the football games and cheerleaders and he's you know looking who am I going to take to the dance I mean that that's where his mindset is now I mean he's 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 there well his neck's swollen so his testosterone is yeah. raising but he's not his hair's not pinned back he's no. not looking around there's no other deer no. around that there that are a threat um, he's just kind of doing his thing and starting to daylight more as the rut comes in no nope, there's no emotion or anxiety he's just like looking ready to go in my opinion on that too so obviously colton or whoever's hunting here has good scent control um he did not do any calling so he probably didn't want to shoot the deer or um just the scenario didn't make sense and just a cool encounter cool footage and and a good video to break down so yes yeah, so and i'll think about this okay if you're walking around or you've seen this or whatever it, it, all of a sudden you're like oh yeah i'm gonna go check that out you know now you put your scent down there. Listen, this deer is putting his scent down and breaking it down at a level that we can't even comprehend. So all of a sudden you put your scent down there, you just killed your spot, you're done. You can't hunt that stand. If you have bad scent control or if you walk into that exact spot, you're done, it's over. You know, you're gonna need a rain, he's gonna have to forget that happened, you know, and. I can't express scent. They communicate by scent so much. Um, people have no idea. I mean, they do, some people do, but I mean, the average hunter has no idea what kind of damage you're doing to the behavior of a deer by putting your presence exactly where they wanna be or where they're going consistently. And if you do that, you're killing yourself, man. Yeah, so in this scenario, he's gonna play the wind if this is a spot that he's hunting for a shot, um, he's going to blow his scent away from that spot, um, take an access trail somewhere low where he can't be detected visually, and um, obviously on the ground, the ground scent too coming in. He doesn't want to cross anything uh, where the deer are going to be walking around where he thinks he's going to shoot them or, or encounter them. So those are probably a couple of things he did here to have a good encounter. Um, it's not every day you have a buck like this just you know posing right in front of you, giving you all the shot opportunities in the world. So um, a lot of good stuff here that Colton and the cameraman did. Yeah, if he was a few years older, he probably would, wouldn't be doing this during the daylight quite at this time. Not at this time, time of the year, no. I think he might be, but it'd be, it'd be real slow and he'd come into the scenario looking around, taking his time. When he left this rub, he didn't really look around and analyze, has anything moved in on me? Is, are there any predators? He just took off. So I think a, a more mature buck would do this, but it would take a lot longer to get there. But would he? And, um, he wouldn't leave and walk just like he, like right now. He just flicks his tail and he just goes. Okay. That's a good point about the tail flick, and then the the tail flicker, perfect um, scenario here of the tail flicker, and then I'm going to walk. So you always watch for that when you're hunting from a hunting perspective. That's extremely helpful. So that's, that's just a great example. This is just a short little minute video. And just think, look at all the information we pulled out of that. There's so much information going on here that you can absorb. And the more you experience it and the more you kind of reflect back on it, the more you're gonna learn. Um, but yeah, this is, a, this is a lot of information in this little piece, uh, this little tiny clip.